Hey everybody, it's Three Things Thursday, and today I want to share with you three products that I kind of regret buying. So these three things are products that I picked up at different stores at different times and I didn't really read reviews on all of them. They're all products that I saw in the stores and decided to just pick up and try out and hope for the best and kind of wish I hadn't. So I wanted to share them with you just in case you might be thinking about buying them um, and trying them out. I'm not saying this to discourage you necessarily from buying it, but it is better to go in with some sort of opinion than none at all. So let's just get started. The first thing I picked up when summer started, and if you don't know, Toronto can get really hot and humid during the summer months. So I wanted something that could moisturize my skin without giving me that sticky feeling that lotion was giving me straight out of the shower. It is the Calgan Ageless Bath Softening Body Oil to Moisturize Skin infused with vitamin E, collagen, and pearl powder all of which are great ingredients for the skin. It didn't cost a lot, it cost me about $7.99 for this, so I figured I'd try it out. I couldn't find any reviews on it whatsoever. So it comes with six fluid ounces and you just shake it up like this before you spray it and I think that's because of the pearl powder in it. So it comes kind of this milky looking substance here. And you just spray it on, rub in, and go. Normally I like to use moisturizing products when my skin is still damp, that way it kind of locks in the hydration and the water. But um, this I used the first time when my skin was dry. And it worked out pretty well, there wasn't any issues. I didn't use a whole ton of it. And I figured I would just try it more thoroughly the next time that I showered. So the next time I tried it, my skin was thoroughly damp. I've used oils and I've used lotions like this before and they've worked perfectly. So I sprayed it on, rubbed it into my skin, let let it dry, went on with my day. And later on I looked at my skin and it just looked really ashy. Like it looked like I stepped into a bucket of chalk. So I wasn't sure if it was because I had used this on my wet skin, like it was soaking wet. So I decided, okay, maybe I'll try it on damp skin when my skin isn't sopping wet from the water. Sprayed it on the next time when my skin was just damp after I towel dried. Same thing. And each subsequent time I tried it, my skin just kept looking like I had walked into some chalk. So I'm not entirely sure what it is in this. I've tried it when I don't shake it up. I tried it when I shake it up for like a couple of minutes before I actually spray it on. I've tried different uh, spraying angles, like trying it far away from the skin, really close to the skin. I've sprayed it into my palm and then used that to kind of rub it into my skin. But every single time, without fail, it looks like, um, you know, like the sidewalk after kids have used their sidewalk chalk all over it. Not really the kind of product that I want considering I'm looking for something moisturizing that's not going to give my skin the appearance of being dry. I've gone now to using the St. Ives uh, Body Lotion Spray which works a million times better. Um, but this one, I just, I can't say that I would ever buy it again. I don't think I would ever recommend it either. It just doesn't seem like the kind of product that anyone would really want if it's going to leave your skin looking chalky and not moisturized and not soft then what is the point? I do like that it has all those ingredients in it so and I might try this underneath a uh, lotion or some sort of cream maybe in the winter time just in case it causes chalkiness still and hopefully my skin could use the things that are in it but other than that I wouldn't suggest using this. Okay, so the second product I'm going to show you is something that I actually did watch reviews on and read reviews about. And it is the New York Color Skin Matching Luminizer with Shade Adjusting Technology with Lumitech Radiance Complex. It comes in this bottle with 0.92 fluid ounces, like this. And it's about $5 at the drugstore, which is a great deal for, uh, I guess it's kind of like a foundation. I got this in the shade 230 Light, which I actually had to write on the bottom of the packaging. It is on the packaging, but it's actually on the plastic sort of cling film that it comes wrapped in. So when you rip that off, it's it disappears as well. 
Um, it's pretty good packaging. It's a sturdy sort of plastic, very small. It doesn't take up a lot of space on your counter. Comes with the pump, and the pump isn't too bad either. I actually, um, at the very beginning, I just had to pump it a couple of times to kind of get the air out and to draw the foundation into the actual straw of the pump. But other than that, it works really well. A lot of the reviews that I saw were for people with similar skin to mine, oily combination, and they really loved the product. They said that it made their skin look luminous but not oily. It was a good coverage that lasted for, uh, you know, six to eight hours, something like that. So I really wanted to try this out and make it work on my skin. However, when I actually did try it out the first time, I applied it as I normally do when I'm testing a new foundation out with a brush on one side and a blending sponge on the other and it started getting streaky on both sides. It looked like I had patches of foundation just coming off of my face um, and it just looked terrible. The coverage just fell apart. I had had it on for about five minutes so there really wasn't any excuse for it to be coming off my face in the way it was. It wasn't humid in the house, I wasn't sweating, I didn't have an excess amount of moisturizer on my face but this stuff was just streaking and sliding and patchy all over. So I just wiped it all off my face and didn't try it for another couple of days. I thought maybe I should try it without any moisturizer underneath. Maybe it's the moisturizer that's making it come off of my skin. The next time I tried it without moisturizer, the same thing happened. And the same thing happened when I tried it with primer and I tried a different primer and then I decided to try mixing it with another foundation to see if maybe that would help. None of these things helped. It did the exact same thing every single time. So I don't think that I could ever use this. Like I don't even know why I still have the bottle for this. I guess I've just been hoping that I can find some magical time when it'll work on my face but every single time I've tried it I've just had to wipe my makeup off and start over again didn't work at all I can't even give the bottle away because I just don't want this to happen to anyone else and I don't know if I just got a dud none of the other reviews that I've seen say that the same thing happened to them so I just don't know but I can't bring myself to spend another five dollars to try and see if it'll happen again. It just seems like such a waste of money to me. I'm not saying don't buy it. It could be different on your skin. It could be just my skin doesn't like this. Who knows? I didn't get any sensitivity or allergies or breakouts from it. So that's a good point, I guess. Or They don't have a huge line of colors. It ranges from kind of like the fair to light medium. But uh, yeah, I just can't recommend it. There are so many better foundations out there that are about the same price tag as this that last a lot longer that you don't have to, you know, bend over backwards and like give it the world to get it to stay on your skin. So I kind of do regret purchasing this, but at the same time, I don't because now I know not to recommend it to anyone else based on my experience. Again, your skin may vary, it may work out perfectly, I may really have just gotten a dud, so who knows, but this is something that I regret spending my money on for myself. Alright, this last thing I'm a little torn on because I actually have a love-hate relationship with it. There are parts of it that I really like, and there are parts of it that I really don't like. It is the Pixie by Petra. Ultimate Beauty Kit 2nd Edition, and I picked this up at Target. It was on sale for I think about $18 to $20 when Target Canada was closing. So basically it comes with 40 eyeshadows, highlighter, and cheek powder. And there's 6 highlighters and 6 blushes essentially. It's a really beautiful palette. It looks like there's a lot of different options for uh, eyeshadows and obviously for highlight and blushes. There are different tones, one side is the cool side, one side is the warm side. The highlighters and the blushes kind of range between cool tones, warm tones, and sort of like rosy tones. So good amount of different uh, products in here. I wasn't able to swatch it in the store because it was actually sealed, but when I brought it home, I swatched it, they looked gorgeous. There were so many different color choices but they really didn't show up. There wasn't variation in the shades. 
Some of them were chalky. A lot of them, when I actually started using them more often, developed that sort of hard crust over the top of the pan that I would have to like dig through to be able to get any pigment out of it. They looked great on finger swatches, but on my lids, you could barely see the color. I tried them wet, I tried them dry, I tried them with my fingers, with the little sponge eyeshadow brushes. I tried them with uh, the regular eyeshadow brushes nothing like they just wouldn't show up well on my skin so it was really disappointing because there looked to be a whole lot in here but it was just so hard to get them to look good on my eyes with primer or without primer just wasn't working for me even the dark shades really tended to be kind of light on my lids so eyeshadows wouldn't suggest it for the eyeshadows. If there is a palette that comes with just the blushes and the highlights, I would recommend getting that. I love the pigment of them. I love the way they look. The blushes are not matte, but they look really great on your skin. They don't look super sparkly like chunky glitter. They look just luminous and it's beautiful on the skin. I don't know if pixie eyeshadows are as bad as the eyeshadows in this palette. I really hope not. But in terms of this palette, I wouldn't suggest getting it. I didn't like the eyeshadows and um, I don't think it's because this palette was old by any means. It was only on clearance sale because Target was closing and not because they were getting rid of it itself. So would I ever repurchase this? Probably not unless I couldn't find the palette with the blush and highlighters on its own. Don't get lured in by the 40 eyeshadow colors because honestly, it's kind of a waste of money. So those are my three things for this Thursday. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe it's helped you figure out things that you may want to purchase or not purchase. If you've had a different experience from mine, please let me know in the comments below or if you have any ideas what I can do to try to make these products work for me, I would really appreciate it. And otherwise, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave me a like. Um, all of the info is in the description bar as always and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.